Crypto Mining in the Arctic Circle. Bitcoin's had its fair share of ups and downs over the years, from rallying 13,000% in 2017 to crashing 70% the year after. But through all this, one thing has stayed the same. Without miners, there'd be no Bitcoin. Of course, mining crypto isn't like mining gold. There's no diggers, no explosives and no smelters involved. Though there's a fair bit of heat and we'll come back to that later. Let's rewind to 2008 when the mysterious Satoshi Nakamoto published a white paper containing the template for the birth of all cryptocurrencies. It explains the process whereby electricity and CPU time is spent in a process that attempts to solve the problem of sending money across a distributed network, removing the need for intermediaries. Effectively, it seeks to solve the problem of trust in a digital era. And to do so, it relies on a concept called proof of work. Like old-fashioned gold miners panning for metal, these CPUs have to hunt for a hash that allows them to write the next block on the blockchain and then get rewarded by some freshly minted Bitcoin from a pool that's designed to never contain more than 21 million. Now, in the early days, anyone could mine Bitcoin. All you needed was to install some software on your home PC or laptop, and off it went. Early adopters sometimes saw it more as a computer game than the start of a financial revolution. To mine Bitcoin requires specialized equipment and a lot of electricity. Because the rate of production of Bitcoin is fixed, but the CPU power expended on creating it is not, the variable that keeps it all in balance is the difficulty of mining. As more people compete for each new Bitcoin, the level of difficulty is increased. And that creates one of two routes to mining Bitcoin. Either wannabe miners can join conglomerates called mining pools that work together to solve the puzzle, or they can set up vast server farms that use graphical processing units over CPUs for their greater number of cores. Such server farms have two problems. First, they need a lot of cheap electricity. That's pushed some to set up shop near hydroelectric facilities, the cheapest and incidentally one of the cleanest forms of energy. And second, all those computers need cooling. And so, in the Siberian city of Norilsk, beyond the polar circle, and only reachable by plane or boat, Bitcluster Mining Farm has made its mark, quite literally, with a sculpture outside a Stalin-era nickel plant in temperatures as low as minus 40 degrees Celsius. The facility's 5,000 rigs still need ventilation to keep cool. At full capacity, they expect to mine up to six bitcoins a day on average. And all of this for a collection of ones and zeros that now regularly fetch more than $50,000 a go. This is Decrypted. I'm Eddie van der Walt. For more of the same, follow us on your favorite platforms.